Oh, the order. Prithee, pay pardon me, wherefore were thee such a disappointment? Thee could have been a very much interesting excitement and graphically impressive game. Instead, thee wast a wasteth of sixty dollars. <laughs> oh, now I'm just thinking how unintentionally funny that game would have been if they all talked like that. So, The Order 1886 was a game I was really interested in playing when it was first announced. However, as more and more information came out, I got more and more worried. The length, content, and gameplay became less and less appealing. In the end though, I bit the bullet and bought the game. And as my bad ye old English has said, it was a waste. That bullet killed my mouth. Yet, despite that, I want a sequel. Yeah, yeah, I'm late to the game when talking about this game, but look at the rest of my content. Most of it's late to the game. So, there was a lot of potential with this title that could have been utilized, and if a sequel should ever be made, this video shows what they could do to actually make it a game worth your time. If you're asking, why did I click this douche's video? I don't have the answer to that, but thank you for clicking what you didn't want to click. Always helpful. Starting off, don't sequel bait your game. You should never create a game thinking as just the start of a big franchise. But because of this, the game's story progression and ending suck. One thing I remember hearing when this game came out is that the story seemed like a story that would be for a tie-in comic rather than the main game. You know how some games might have a comic based on the game that usually takes place before the game? And it's simple so that the main game can have the interesting story. That's this game's story. Just lead in for something better. Not to mention, the plot points are so by the book, every single plot point is predictable. You'll know exactly what happens before it happens, how characters will react, how they will miscommunicate, what the twists will be, how events play out, so on and so forth. It's a little difficult to talk about without spoiling it, but let's just say you can figure out this plot in under an hour. One way to fix it? Don't make it short! This should be a no-duh moment, but they did it anyway. Put your all into this game like it's the only one. Go on expecting this to be the only one. If a sequel comes out of it, fine, good. But never make anything expecting it to be automatically successful. And instead of making the whole story about conspiracy, you only make about half the game that, and the rest of the consequences of said conspiracy, plus interesting ways for the game to get a happy, or at least a good and satisfying, ending. Oh, and let's talk about our characters, shall we? The only two interesting ones die. So the whole game, you are dealing with a bunch of blank clods. <gasps> Look! He's the hero! Ooh, she's the strong and independent kick-ass female! Oh look, the perverted but pure at heart character. Look, rebels! Oh, the council of old people who are stubborn and don't want to understand the modern thinking. <sighs> Not to mention, since the game is so short with pretty much no resolution, whatever arcs these characters had never gets resolved. That's a showmanship of good writing, folks. Stop developing a character and leave the story to be explored another day. Whee! <sighs> Easiest way to fix this? Don't cut your game short! For as long as the game took to be made, it seems like the main focus was the graphics and not the story or gameplay. You know, some of the most important parts of a video game? The main aspects of a video game? <laughs> and of course, speaking of which, the complete wasted potential of the gameplay. When this game was first announced, the trailer may look like our main enemies were werewolves, which, given this zombie-infested fad has been going on for quite a few years, seemed like a breath of fresh air. For me, two days later, I thought, we're mostly going to fight humans, aren't we? Sure enough, yes. And you want to know the best part? They are more enjoyable to fight than the werewolves. The AI for them is so bad, I'm glad there are only three of these sections in the game. Yeah, for a game about werewolves being your main enemies, you barely fight them. Okay, I'm jumping around everywhere. Let me try to take this in order. That was not intentional. 
This game is a cover-based third-person shooter akin to all of these. The shooting works completely fine. The main problem I have with the gameplay is everything else. Melee, upgrades, dodging without prompts, and stealth. First, the hand-to-hand. -hand. There really is none. In most games that have guns, when you run out of ammo, or want to conserve it, you can use a physical attack, which usually has its own button. Should you feel the need and an enemy is close, you can just beat the shit out of them. In the order, you have a melee attack, but only when a prompt appears. So you could be out of bullets or just close to an enemy and want to attack them, but can't until the prompt comes up. Do I even need to say why this is bad? Why can't we just have a button dedicated to melee attacks so that we can attack when we want? They have those big ass knives on their back that are sorely underutilized. Use those! Next, upgrading, or again, lack thereof. Giving us upgrades gives us incentive to try out new tactics. And should the upgrades be collectible, explore. It's actually a good reason to look around and find stuff instead of audio tapes that no one cares about. Sons and daughters of Britain, be merry and joyful, for we have entered a new era of prosperity. Today, our glorious empire leads the relentless march of progress as Her Majesty's army and royal knights keep a watchful eye over our motherland. Holding That's so boring! At bay. Plus, if there was a new game plus, not that I would have a reason for it, you could see what those upgrades could do in the early game. The weapons are cool already, but could you imagine if we could upgrade them in some capacity, or maybe even build our own weapons? Wouldn't that be fun? No, wait. It's a super ethereal game, that's right. No fun allowed. Now, dodging. Like melee attacks, you can only dodge when a prompt appears. So if you want to get out of a sticky situation, you can't until the game tells you that you can. So now if you want to roll around at the speed of... Uh... Safe? You can't. Like a deer in headlights. And the last thing is the stealth sections. <sighs> In most games, stealth genre related or not, you can sneak around and kill enemies quietly. Should you mess up, you can then go Rambo on everyone, or run and hide until their short term memory kicks in and they forgot you ever existed. In this game, you fuck up, you start over again. If the stealth section is short, it's not too bad. However, late in the game, there's a section that requires you to kill all of the enemies since the key's conveniently in the last guy you kill. Since you can't just get caught and try to hide until you can sneak out again, if you die, you have to start from the beginning. And you can't kill them when you want to, unless you press the button at the correct time. <sighs> I have no problems with quick time events, but they should not be a substitute for a basic game mechanic. Easy way to fix this? DON'T DO STEALTH MECHANICS LIKE THIS! The kill can still be cinematic, but allow us, the player, to tactically kill when we feel like it. Oh, and no way in hell am I forgetting how they botched up the huge potential of the enemies and the bosses. This game seems to be marketed as a Castlevania game with guns. Actually, that sounds stupid, but you get what I mean. Horror movie monsters being your main enemies. We got that with the wolves, but they botched it. Now, I expected humans to be enemies in the game, but I want more supernatural enemies in the game as well. The werewolves are terrible enemies to fight. I'll just let the footage here do the talking. Also, the bosses in the game are wolfmen. This doesn't sound bad, right? Well, there are only two bosses in the whole game, and they work the exact same way. Take a look.
way to improve, at least the normal fights, is to not have them in such enclosed areas. It makes it easy to cheat the AI's pattern, you can barely move, and it is no challenge. Make the space bigger, and make the patterns randomized so that it is a surprise, and these things together can actually be a challenge. Now you can still have objects to obscure where the wolves are, but you still need space to move around. The boss one is easy. Give us normal gameplay. That's it. You can still have this intricate knife combat, but only at the beginning or end of the fight. The main fight should be normal gameplay. And make the bosses do different things. They are in different environments, so have them take advantage of that. Now there is one more thing that I want to talk about, but that will require me to spoil a bit of the game, so if you don't want to hear it, skip to this point in the video. You good? Okay. It turns out that the werewolves are working with the vampires. The vamps have cool designs too. So what happens is that you start burning the sleeping vampires in their coffins. Towards the end, the whole place is on fire. A bunch of guys come in to stop you. Uh, you know what would have been cool since you just introduced vampires? How the fight against vampires! It just makes so much sense, my god! How could I miss that? Have a few wake up and try to kill you. They can move and attack like nothing else in the game, making it interesting and unique to fight as nothing else in the game has been like this. <sighs> Later on, you also find Jack the Ripper, who's also a vampire. Okay, that's stupid, but could still work. Either have a fight with him in his vampire form for the entire time, or have half the fight against his human form and the rest of the fight in his vampiric form. But no. Just a cutscene that is also predictable how it turns out. Also, there should have been more content. You don't need multiplayer, but a challenge mode, special scenarios, something more than just a game you'll play once and never again. Now, applying all these changes to a sequel won't automatically make a game of the year material, but it would make the game fun and more worth the money. It would be a graphical beauty and a fun game. As it stands, this game is not worth full, full price, or even half price for a 6 hour game with absolutely no replayability. What I'm basically saying is, if you want a good PlayStation exclusive horror based action game, go play the shit out of Bloodborne instead. And don't you know, I'm Galahad no more. And of course, speaking of which, the complete wasted potential of the gameplay. When this game was first announced, the trailer made it look like our main enemies were werewolves, which given this zombie infested fad that's been going on for quite a few years, seemed like a bit a uh, a uh, 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 <sighs> Now, dodging. Like melee attacks, you can only dodge when a prompt appears. So if you want to get out of a sticky situation, you can't unkill, unkill, unkill. You can't unkill. You can't get out of a sticky situation. I'm messing up freaking the bloopers now too. So if you want to get out of a sticky situation, you can't unkill. The game tells you that you can. Hmm. Me thinks I should take some speech classes. This game seems to be marketed as a Castlevania game with guns. Uh, actually, that sounds stupid. But you get what I mean. Horror movie monsters being your main em enemies. An en 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 enemy. An en 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 enemy. An en enemy. 